you guys, welcome back to Flickers of Fear. Now, I think I'm probably speaking for most horror nerds like me when I say that there are really very few things in life uh, that are as gratifying or as joy-inducing uh, as stumbling across a movie pretty much randomly that you'd never really heard of before and finding out that it's actually one of the most entertaining things that you've seen in a very, very long time. And that's pretty much exactly what happened with today's movie, which is called Bloody Hell, and it came out in 2020 originally. I think it was one of those things that, you know, kind of premiered at festivals and stuff like that and then didn't get a wider release until early 2021, as far as I could determine. Now, this movie, I actually first just saw it. It popped up on Shudder probably like a month ago, something like that. And it uh, subsequently earned that oh-so-rarefied Five Skull rating, which, like I said, you don't really see that much on there, uh, and it's usually, like, older films that get it. So that kind of, like, perked my interest uh, right away. Now, as I normally do, and I've said this on many of the shows before, I didn't read any further than the one-sentence synopsis, which was on Shudder. Now, in this case, the one-sentence synopsis for Bloody Hell was, and this is a direct quote, a man with a mysterious past flees the country to escape his own personal hell, only to arrive somewhere much, much, much worse. And that's it. Yeah, that doesn't even, like, begin to contain. Uh, but yeah, so, so I just read that, and I was like, Five Skulls, okay, I'm on board. So I hit play on that sucker, and then went on to soak in the awesomeness. Bloody Hell was actually written by Robert Benjamin, uh, amazingly, in his screenwriting debut, and directed by an Australian filmmaker named Alistair Grierson. Now, he only has like a couple of films, uh, it appears, under his belt at this point. Probably the best known of those being uh, for this 2011 film. It was like a 3D like cave diving drama called Sanctum. I think it was produced by James Cameron, or James Cameron had something to do with it. But I have to say with both of these guys, like, don't let this lack of previous credits fool you because this movie just has wit, style, and hilarity for days and features some really, really fantastic, like really gruesome practical effects and some really like creative kills. For to get kind of like maybe like an idea of the ballpark of this movie, imagine if the movie Hostel was directed by Sam Raimi and also had kind of like some Fight Club like stuff in there as well. And you're kind of like getting into, it's kind of like the area that we're talking about. So Bloody Hell is an action horror comedy, I guess I would call it. Now it was shot in Australia, but it's actually set in both Boise, Idaho and Helsinki, Finland. Uh, this works because most of it is shot indoors, so it doesn't really matter. You don't really see like a lot of the outside, so you don't really like think like, hey, that's Australia or anything like that. Now I will say that although the script is amazing, it's very tight, it's just like laugh out loud funny in places, the real star of the show here is the lead actor actor, Ben O'Toole. Now he's an Australian actor and uh, just flawlessly playing an American. I didn't even realize he was Australian like while I was watching this. And his charisma is just like off the charts and he has just like impeccable comic timing. Uh, the guy gives off some real kind of like Robert Downey Jr. vibes like in the best possible way. Like, you know what I mean? Like a Tony Stark kind of thing, but not quite that sarcastic, but similar kind of uh, along those lines. Uh, this guy really needs more roles and bigger roles like immediately, like yesterday, you know what I mean? Like this guy's great. Uh, other than this movie, I think he's done some Australian TV and he had some kind of smaller roles in Hacksaw Ridge, like from 2016 and uh, a movie called 12 Strong. And I knew that I had recognized him from somewhere and the place I recognized him from is actually the only other lead role that I've ever seen him in, which was actually a movie called Necrotronic from 2018, which was like another Australian kind of horror comedy, which I think I also saw on Shudder. And that's also great. It's not as good as this one, but it's also pretty good. And uh, he's in that as well, like as a lead role. And as far as I know, that movie and this one are the only ones that he's had a lead role in so far. And hopefully that changes uh, down the line. Cause like I said, he's great. Now, in my opinion, Bloody Hell is much better gone into without any knowledge of what it's about or where it's going. I mean, I generally find that's true of most movies, but in this one, uh, I, like, particularly. So if you're going to watch any further, uh, either go watch the movie and then come back or continue on at your own peril because I'm assuming that you don't care. I'm not going to spoil what happens at the ending, but I will be talking about some plot points that you might not want to know in advance. So this is your last warning. If you want to watch it without knowing anything about it, then please am and then come back later. 
Okay, so now that all those people are gone or, you know, or, or don't care past this point, so Ben O'Toole uh, plays a guy named Rex. Now, he's a military veteran. They don't go too much into his backstory, but you can kind of, like, figure it out, like, from context clues or whatever. Now, at the beginning, he kind of apparently has this crush slash flirtation thing going on with this woman named Maddie, who's played by a woman named Ashley Lolback. Now, she works at a bank credit union type situation. So one day, uh, Rex is visiting Maddie at her teller window, like, I guess, like, trying to ask for a date or whatever. And while that's happening, a group of four armed guys wearing masks, like, bust into the bank and start doing, like, a very violent robbery. I mean, like, they bust in and, like, shoot somebody right away and, like, make everybody get down and stuff like that. Now, Rex, with the help of his previous military training, and it should be said, also his sort of wisecracking conscience who actually manifests throughout the movie as another version of himself that he has like discussions with. He knows that it's not there. He's not like crazy, but that's how the movie conveys that he's like talking to himself and like figuring stuff out in his head is there's another version of him that's like more sarcastic and uh, you know, and it helps him like kind of like come to decisions about things. And I really, really like that aspect of the movie because you're able to like kind of get inside his head without like in a really creative way without having to do like a voiceover or something like that it's like a really stylish way of doing it so uh so he's able to actually get the drop on the criminals and ends up pretty much like wasting them uh saving pretty much all the employees and the customers at the bank although his vigilante tactics do result in one innocent person getting killed now because of this rex gets arrested and the DA, I guess like reckless endangerment or something like that, the DA offers him a deal. They're like, look, you can either serve eight years in prison and then just like walk away scot-free, or you can take it, take your chances with like a jury trial or whatever and risk getting 20 years, which is like the minimum sentence. So he says, well, I'll just take the eight. So he ends up like going to prison and serving his time. They don't really go a lot into that in the movie. So, cause it's not like hugely important. Now, after he gets out of prison, he has to deal with being something of a celebrity. I mean, footage of the heroics that he pulled at the bank went viral. And most people kind of think he's a badass, like on par with like John Wick, because he does do like some kind of John Wick shit. There are still like some people who kind of blame him for getting that one innocent woman killed. So there's kind of like, you know, some people are just like fucking with him and stuff. And everywhere he goes, he's just getting photographed and all that kind of crap. Adding to all this is the fact that he's still like a little bit bummed out, heartbroken, I guess like that, um, by the fact that Maddie, who was, you know, the woman who had a crush on, whose life he actually saved on that particular day, only visited him in prison once, and that was to tell him, hey, I never want to see you again because I don't know you well enough and I don't like it. I don't want to have to feel obligated to like come here and see you uh, just because I feel bad. So it was like, it was pretty harsh. I'm just saying that, she, but she laid down some like truth or whatever. So, but he was like kind of bummed out about that because he's like, well, hey, I saved your life. You know what I mean? So there's that whole thing. So to get away from all the kind of media hoopla and, you know, the bad memories he has surrounding Maddie, he decides he's going to leave the country for a while. Now he decides on Finland simply because when he was in his jail cell still uh, and he was like thinking about getting out he's like uh so he shot some spitballs like at a map on the wall and like three of them inexplicably landed in Finland uh, as though his fate had already been decided. And he's like, okay, well, I guess that doesn't usually happen. So Finland it is. Now, upon arriving in Finland, he is immediately like in the airport we're talking. Uh, he gets immediately eyeballed by this very creepy, like older Finnish couple. And they're talking about him, but obviously they're speaking Finnish and he doesn't know what they're saying. But a friendly bystander kind of comes by and says, hey, those two said that they were planning to get you. So he kind of just thinks, oh, well, maybe they just recognize me for, like from the news or something like that. So he just like ignores them. But then when he goes outside the airport to get a cab, the driver inside there like gasses him. And then some indeterminate amount of time later, Rex finds himself hanging from like a ceiling beam in this dark basement with one of his legs missing from the knee down. So from there, Rex and his conscience slash alter ego have to figure out a way to get out of this predicament before it gets any worse than it already is. Uh, see, it turns out that Rex has actually been abducted by this very freaky Finnish family who it ends up like have this really grotesque son with let's call them some very specific dietary requirements 
okay? So, uh, from this point, like I said, Rex is gonna have to use, like, his intelligence, his military training, and he does get some help from the seemingly normal daughter of the family, uh, to basically, like, keep from being portioned off as snacks, uh, just piece by piece. So, as I mentioned, this movie was an absolute riot. I mean, it was just, like, I mean, it's a dark comedy for sure. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? But it's just, I don't know. It was just, like, really just exuberantly fun, really fast-paced. I mean, it's not very long. It's only, like, 90 minutes. It had a, a lot of really good, like, well-executed black humor, some great gore set pieces, a lot of it having to do with, like, you know, body parts getting cut off and, like, you know, real gory shit like that. Uh, had a great fucking musical score. I have to, like, bring that up a little bit, too. I mean, the interactions between Rex and his, you know, snarkier conscience, who was, you know, obviously the same actor. I was just like in stitches, like a lot of their interactions are like super funny. And I also really liked the very, very amusing chemistry between Rex and the weird family's daughter. Uh, her, her name was uh, Alia. And she's actually played by a woman named Meg Fraser, and this is her first movie, so she did fucking great. So this movie is just, like I said, it's very, I don't want to go too much in the direction of saying it's like Sam Raimi-ish. It is kind of like that, but it's not like quite as wacky or quite as over the top, but it does have this really stylishly shot kind of thing that evokes like Sam Raimi a little bit, but it's kind of like its own thing. Um, and it also has like a lot of really, really good, like effective tension. Like it's not scary, scary, but it does like have a lot of tension in it. Uh, it is like expertly paced and it has also a lot of like really clever kind of inside jokes and a lot of um movie references which are really good they're kind of, they're subtle like sometimes but they're really like well done and some of them are actually like pretty obscure and like i was just kind of like wait did they just refer oh yeah okay i see what you did there that's really pretty awesome so i mean it was just and the performances it's just it was just so, so good. Like, all the performances are good. Everybody in it is good. It was just fantastic. It's just, like, a hell of a good time. Uh, and just watching it just made me giddy with happiness. And I just love what that ha when that happens. Because it was a movie that I hadn't really, you know, seen anything about. I hadn't really heard of it before. Like, I hadn't seen any buzz about it or anything. And I just kind of saw it because there it was on Shutter, and it had five skulls, and I was just kind of like, oh, you know, ones with five skulls, because like I said, people that um, rate the movies on Shutter, they're all like horror nerds like me, so they're like usually super, super picky, and you don't usually see stuff, especially newer movies that have five skulls, so that like got my interest right away, and this was absolutely worth it. I just had a fucking blast with this movie. It's so, so fun. So if you're really, really into horror comedies, particularly like very, very dark comedies that have like a lot of gore, uh, then you will probably really, really love this. It's just a fun movie in general and I just had a great time watching it so if you have Shudder please check it out it's definitely definitely worth it so that'll do it for this Flickers of Fear I will see you guys again on the next one bye <laughs>